problem. I still got plan C. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Plan C Podcast. This is the Eastern Conference preview for the NBA. NBA tips off on the 22nd. It is the 16th. Uh, when re- on recording, it is the 16th. This will come out on the 17th. So, holy fuck, it's back, right? Like, it really snuck up on us. I guess that's what happens when your basketball team is in the WNBA Finals and your baseball team is in the ALCS, baby. We're not going to talk about the sickness. Anyway, thanks for giving us a listen here. Uh, make sure you're liking, sharing, subscribing, whether it's on YouTube, check us out on Spotify, check us out on Apple podcast anchor breaker youtube all over everywhere we're there baby um look forward to the western conference podcast predictions i think that'll come out on saturday i'm gonna say yeah saturday sounds about right um and then look forward to our week seven recap with aj woohoo um that will be monday or tuesday just depends if we want to watch the monday night game um yeah we'll see anyway enjoy the episode i'm not going to talk too much please check it out enjoy and i'll see you on the other side peace hello welcome back folks um as i mentioned in the intro and you know what i've been talking about recently this is the eastern conference nba preview um i i really thought about how i wanted to do this um i thought about doing it all in one go thought about having a guest um and i asked a couple people but I don't know. I didn't want to ask somebody to like, I didn't want to be like, well, I I did ask. (laughs) I didn't want to force somebody to, you know, have to study up on all 30 or 15 teams if I did it, you know, how I'm doing it now, except I had guessed. But doing this solo, I, I actually don't remember the last time I did a solo pod. So if I'm rusty, you know, rock with me. Um, So the way this is going to work is, again, broke it down into east-west, just going to go in alphabetical order. Um, I'm not not really going to talk about the rookies, and the the draft really... I, I mean, I think... The, there were only two teams, three teams that I was like, okay, this is going to be in terms of the macro of their season, you know, the, the outlook. Um, I was kind of like, okay, you know, I, I really think I only want to mention three players, um, you know, maybe four. But anyway, um, so yeah, going to go in alphabetical order. So. Sorry, Wizards fans, but you got to get to the end of this podcast uh, to hear what I think about your team. Um, yeah, I just uh, just before I start getting into individual teams, um, <clears throat> it's a weird it's a weird time I think in the NBA because the league is primed for expansion. Uh, what does that mean? That means that there's now so much talent on each team that, you know, they're they're ready to dilute, you know, these teams by adding two more teams. Um, Vegas and Seattle, that that's who it's going to be. Um, I'm assuming they'll realign the leagues. And I'll say, like, I don't know, probably Memphis and maybe New Orleans join the East. Um, so it's, it, I, I mentioned that it's a weird time because there, there are some rosters that five years ago 
would have made the playoffs and this year are just bad teams specifically in the east um and it, it it's also a weird off season because <clears throat> when looking at the additions and the losses you're like I, like this team didn't change too much you know there's there's not a lot of change that's happened um in terms of I, I don't know i don't know it doesn't it doesn't feel like like personally my expectations for a lot of the teams it, it, it feels like they fall in a very similar place where they did last season. I don't know. Maybe that's just an NBA thing. I don't know. Um, by the way, Liberty won tonight. We are up 2-1 against the Minnesota Lynx. That's fucking hype as fuck. Um, Liberty have been to the WNBA finals a bunch of times, but they've never been able to win it. So, you know, to be this close now, um, as a Liberty fan, as somebody who lives a three-minute walk away from Barclays Center, this is really fucking hype. Um, the Yankees are also up 2-0 against, the, um, against the, the Guardians. I almost said their old team name. That would have been wrong. Um, and that's, that's so fucking hype. Uh, this Yankee team looks comprised in, you know, just, just of – of really solid guys um, and players who are coming along at the right time, having good, good timing in terms of when they get on base. So, you know, really, really looking forward to that. Um, the Mets are also in the CS, but they're playing the Los Angeles Dodgers. Um, and yeah, so I don't know. It doesn't, doesn't, doesn't look great. They're currently losing four to nothing in game three. Um, so that game might go to two to one in favor of LA of LA. Anyway, <clears throat> let's get into this thing. Um, so obviously first, first team is the Atlanta Falcons. Um, Falcons. Wow. Wrong bird. Atlanta Hawks. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Falcons fans. Falcons are pretty good. I'm about to be pretty mean to this team. Um, so last year Falcons were 36 and 46, uh, finished 10th in the East. So they were playing team, but they still, <laughs> they still got the number one overall pick, which so fucking funny. Um, and if you're, I think if you're a lottery team, you're kind of like, what the, like if you're the Pistons, you're like, what the fuck happened there? Um, anyway, so, a big, <clears throat> a big move that Atlanta made this offseason was you trade Jamal Murray. Jamal Murray. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, no. Not Jamal Murray. Um, Deontay Murray. Um, and, you know, this is... I didn't... I didn't think this was a good trade when... When, when Atlanta first gave up three fucking first-round picks, um, you, you gave up three first-round picks to the Spurs to get the guy, and it was like, wait, you already have somebody who, like, is a ball stopper and kind of runs the offense and blah, blah, blah. So it, this this trade never made sense to me. So they... Um, so, you, so you essentially, you lose Murray, you lost Sadiq Bay. And you got Dyson Daniels and Nance Jr., um, which, you know, not a terrible return, but I think relative to what you paid, not good. Um, you know, this, this team is still built around Trey. If Trey's on the floor, he's going to be running the offense and he's going to be a defensive liability. You know, Richache... I think I said that correctly. Um, I should have written down a pronunciation. Uh, you know, well, he he's looked half decent in preseason, uh, and we'll we're, we're kind of just gonna have to see. Um, this was supposed to be a really weak draft, so the number one overall pick in said draft, you know, not great. Um, and so, you know, I think. I think this can be a playoff team if things go really well and you just find a way to make it work around Trey. It it there is a ceiling. I I think there's a ceiling of like 48 wins. 
Um, Quinn Snyder has shown that <clears throat> he is a decent head coach. I I think there's a lot of question. Just personally, there's a lot of questions I have when Trey's on the floor. Trey is insanely talented, and he's he is one of the best creators that we've ever seen in the game. But... There's just there's a lot of liability in his game, you know, super heliocentric, um, just a, a defensive nightmare. Like you have to hide him on defense, um, you know, and and Trey's really cool and he, you know, he, he, he has good numbers, but we haven't we haven't seen it since they made the Eastern Conference Finals the one year, you know, Um so I don't know if this is I, I think I think if it doesn't happen this year, you know, with I think they're projected to start young Dyson Daniels, um, Hunter, Johnson and Capella. Johnson, by the way, solid player, solid player. I'm, I am interested to see what happens with that. And, you know, Clint Capella is solid as always as well. Anyway, I truth be told, like decent ceiling but i do think this team will be mediocre um it is hard for me to get excited about a tray centered team and you know you're just you're just not gonna have a good defense you're not it's heliocentric and there's decent depth on this team but it i don't know the, for me there's i have a lot more questions than i do answers but hey, we'll see. I I I think this team is going to be a playoff team, play in team, play in team. We'll say like I don't know ninth seed. This smells like a ninth seed team. Moving on, Boston Celtics. Um, this one this one's really easy actually. So last year the Celtics were sixty four and eighteen, first in the East, went on to win the championship, beat the Dallas Mavericks in five games. Um, you didn't lose anyone important, you know. You added Lonnie Walker, the fourth. You you re-signed Hauser. You re-signed Tatum. You re-signed White. You re-signed Tillman. These are these are these are the moves that you make when you have a championship team as solid as this. Um, they didn't they didn't lose any depth. They didn't. This is this is like this is basically the same team that won the championship last year. Um, I think this team like. 65 wins is within the question. Um, the 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 floor will only be reached by injury, I think. In in no circumstance where you have, you know, Holiday and uh, Tatum and Brown healthy and White healthy, I think if th- those four stay healthy, they they're winning 50 games at a minimum. Um it's, it's going to be the same starters as last year, um, at least when Porzingis comes back. So, you know, that's just Holiday, White, Brown, Tatum, Porzingis. And I, I'm i assuming Horford will um, – I'm assuming Horford will start for the first part of the season just while Porzingis is getting back. But we'll see. Yeah. The, this team this team is fully primed to repeat. Yeah. Um, I think they're probably on paper the best team in the NBA. Yeah, no, they they are they are. Um, yeah, so Celtics fans, like it, I I think it'll be a fun season. Um, yeah, lock in. <clears throat> um, another easy one. <laughs> My beloved Brooklyn Nets. Um, so last year the Nets finished thirty two and fifty. They were 11th in the East, one spot out of a play-in. I think they were like four games back. Um, you lost uh, you lost McCall Bridges. You traded him to the Knicks to bottom out, right? Um, Lonnie Walker went to Boston. Oh, well. Uh, you added Bogdanovich, Shake Milton, you know, some fun names. You re-signed Claxton. You re-signed Trendon Watford, who... I mean, solid, solid NBA player potentially. Um, I I think it's good to have him in the building, just to you know figure that out. Claxton, you you got to do the Claxton deal every time. Um, 
because not only will he become a valuable trade piece for a a team that's you know looking to contend I, I, you, you just don't want to lose the asset um you don't want to lose him for nothing and i know it wouldn't have been oh no wait he was a second round pick so yeah no they he was he was yeah he was unrestricted um so you know i i i can't fault the nets for hitting the reset button and tanking in the way that they have decided to do um you weren't getting any better with the core you had um you you just you straight up weren't um <laughs> and you know this team is tanking I, I expect for trades for other pieces um they're they're gonna want to gather as much draft capital as possible and yeah you know i think this potentially could be a really really bad season um the 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 floor the floor is like 15 games you know we're we're talking real real bad nets like mid 2010s nets bad um and the ceiling well you know people are really really high on Jordy Fernandez the nets new uh head coach comes from Sacramento uh you know Sacramento runs just pretty efficient offense and i don't know i'm 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 interested to see there's there is a world where the nets play above their station and i mean there's there's zero percent chance that this team goes 500 like they're in in no world is this team going 500 or over it so you know maybe they win it my what i don't want to see happen is we play ourselves out of cooper flag or ace bailey just by playing well, and then we have really shitty odd, uh, lottery odds. Um, yeah, uh, projected starters, it's going to be Schroeder, Cam Thomas, Cam Johnson, Dorian Finney-Smith, and then Claxton at the uh, at the five. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, we, 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 we traded Bridges and some of the Phoenix picks to Houston just to, to, to restart the tank. Um, it's it's going to be... It's going to be bad. This is year zero of the rebuild you know um and truthfully if i'm a nets fan i would expect i'd say zero players on this roster in the next three seasons get like don't if you're a nets fan don't be quick to go out and buy a jersey that's what I, and that's coming from a nets fan anyway um Moving on to the Charlotte Hornets. Um, last year, the Hornets were 21-61. and 61. They were 13th in the East. Um, Las Bertans, Jackson Poku, just uh, nobody really notable, honestly. Um, got Josh Green. You got Giles in the, um, in the offseason. You re-sign, you re-sign Miles Bridges, and you re-sign Steph, Steph Curry, they wish. Um, Seth Curry. Um, new coach, Charles Lee, uh, he was on the Celtics last year and he was also on the Bucks, uh, roster when they made their finals run. So, you know, that's, that's, that, that's a good sign. You're bringing in some pedigree. You're bringing in, uh, somebody who's, you know, seen what it's like, blah, blah, blah. Um, but you know, I, I, I do feel similar uh, I do feel similar about the Hornets and t uh, that I do the Hawks. Just where it's like, you know, LaMelo, like, it, it's another year of LaMelo. Is, is this going to work? Is he going to stay healthy? I know he's had lots of, he, he's had lots of injuries and he's dealt with a lot in terms of that. But I don't know. We haven't seen it. Um, I, I'm personally super excited for Brandon Miller. Uh, I think it would be very fun to try and get as much draft capital as you can or a good piece for LaMelo. Like, let's call up, I don't know, let's say Portland and be like, hey, LaMelo for Scoot and you just throw in a couple firsts. I know it's kind of an outrageous trade, but, you know, I, I, 
I think the Hornets need a soft reset because LaMelo, I'm not convinced that he is more than a good stats, bad team guy. You know, I'm not convinced yet. Um, and I would like to see more Brandon Miller um, running that. Um, yeah, yeah, you, you, you just build around Brandon Miller and like, fuck it, let's see what happens. Um, you know, they just seem to continue to be bad no matter who is playing. I, I don't get it, man. Like, this team has been futile for a while. And I know they made the playoffs a couple years ago. But I don't know. I feel like in my lifetime, I've seen this franchise make the playoffs twice. I don't even think they've won a freaking series while I've been paying attention to basketball. That's crazy, man. Anyway. Um, I, like, do you... Do you just tank? You know? Do you try and get Ace Bailey or Cooper Flag? Because I I do think in this weak East, I think this could be a playing team. Brandon Miller takes the next step. LaMelo starts playing winning basketball. You know, Miles Bridges is dunking on everyone. Mark Williams is, you know, defending really well. I I fucking see it. Josh Green is a valuable piece. You know, you know, I can I can see it. Um but do I think it'll happen? No. I think I think I think this is going to be a bad team again. Um I hope I'm wrong because it would be really exciting to see these guys on to the next. Um Chicago Bulls last year 39 and 43, ninth in the East. When you I God, when I do the West and I like I get to the Warriors and they're above 500, but they're just like it's yeah, it's insane in terms of the strength of the West versus the East. And there's just so many more scary teams in the West. I I partially think that's why expansion is going to happen in Seattle and Las Vegas because you're like, we need some shitty teams in the West. <laughs> and then Memphis and New Orleans, when they come East, they're just going to like be on top of the fucking, um, on top of the standings forever. Um, all right, so Bulls, you added Chris Duarte, um, Josh Giddy, Jalen Smith. You lost Caruso, DeMar, Andre Drummond, Javante Green. Resigned Patrick Williams. Your projected starters are Josh Giddy, Kobe White, Zach Levine, LOL, uh, Patrick Williams, and Vooch. Billy Donovan is coaching them. Um, I mean, what's the direction of this team? Are we just are we just writing it out with Levine's contract? There are a bunch of teams in the East like this been mediocre to bad for like the last five years and they look like they're headed in the same damn direction is lonzo back i i think he played a preseason game today um or last night i don't know but it, uh, allegedly he's back who knows i it's just as somebody whose team has just been in this position i just i hate when a team is stuck in neutral like this it's really annoying you know Come on, just tear it down and start over. But I guess it's kind of hard to when you're paying Zach Levine as much as you are. Um, yeah, I I don't I don't think as they're built this team can win forty games. But you never know. I think giving up Caruso for Giddy was ah, it's a high risk, high reward move. Because Giddy has shown flashes for sure, but you are losing a lot of like guaranteed, just really annoying defense and just a solid NBA player in Caruso. Wait till we get to the West because I I I can't wait to talk about OKC. Um, it's it's so fucking. This team is just weird. 
it, does them losing DeMar, will that open things up? Like, does that mean that Kobe White is now, like, is Kobe White now the number one, right? I, I don't know, dude. This is weird. This team is weird. I, I think, you know, and I respect Billy Donovan as a coach, but I think there's only so much you can do because it feels like, so to me, Josh Giddy, Kobe White, Zach Levine, and Vooch, all four of those can potentially be like black holes on offense. Um, by the way, the, the, the Bulls trading two first round picks for Vucevic to not even make the playoffs like they've only made the play in it's just hilarious like two first round picks man Whew. moving on the cleveland cavaliers 48 and 34 last year fourth in the east um no major additions or subtract subtractions they did however re-sign allen isaac okoro donovan mitchell and mobley um, uh, starters, same as last year, Garland, Mitchell, Struess, Mobley, Allen, uh, new coach and Kenny Atkinson. So that's going to be good. I think Kenny Atkinson is a really good coach just in terms of developing his players. I'm not crazy on his X's and O's, but he's also, he's also been on a really good assistant coach run. Like he lived in fucking golden state for years and I think when that happens and you're just around that type of offensive genius in terms of Steph Curry and uh, Steve Kerr, I don't know if I'll call Steve Kerr genius, but Steph Curry certainly is. Um, I think that will bode well. Um, so this team almost won 50 games last year, right? And then they got waxed 4-1 by the Celtics. And I know there were injuries, I know. But I think two questions need to be answered this season. One, Allen and Mobley. Is this long term? You just signed, you know, both of them are under contract now for a good amount of time. So this, I, I don't know. Because in this league, you, this is not the, this is not the way that teams are necessarily built. Um, so you're paying both of them. You're playing both of them. And I don't know. I personally think with this much, with the talent on this starting lineup, I think you like if you traded Allen for like a really solid wing or something. I, I think that could go really well, you know. But they don't have any picks, so kind of hard to uh, to do that. Second question. Can Donovan Mitchell be a number one on a championship winning team? <sighs> Truthfully, I, I, I unfortunately do think this is a no. Um, I love Donovan Mitchell, but I don't know. We haven't seen it. His best playoff series happened in the bubble. And, you know, by the time this these playoffs start, it'll be five years ago. Well, uh, no, I guess it'll be in the summer because the bubble was later. Neither here nor there. It's been a while since we've seen that level of Donovan Mitchell, and he definitely performs in the regular season. But I don't know. We just we haven't we haven't seen it um, like that in the postseason since then. You know, hey, Cavs, make the make the conference finals. Dude, like, get back there. You're, you're, you you got a good fan base. Um, I do think this is an incredibly talented team with a very, very high defensive upside. Um, so this, I, I, I think, I think the ceiling is legitimately 60 wins. Um, I think this team could explode like that. Um, do I think they will actually do that? Nah, not so sure. I think we'll get to 50 Maybe like low 50s, 51, 52. Um, yeah. And I think. I think that at worst, this is a play in team. 
and and that that will be because of injuries. This team can this team can withstand a couple of pretty 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 bad injuries. Um but I'm not I'm not trying to, you know. Anyway, I just think that they can potentially do well. Um yeah. Anyway, the Pistons they trois. Last year, the Pistons were 14 and 68. Ugh. That is so fucking bad. They were 15th in the East. Um, they added Tim Hardaway Jr., Tobias Harris, Malik Beasley. Um, lost Wiseman, lost Quentin Grimes, and they re-signed Cade Cunningham. Starting lineup, Cade, Jaden Ivey, Osar Thompson, Tobias Harris, uh, and Duren. JB Bickerstaff uh, has replaced um, the the incomparable incomparable Coach Williams. Shout out Monty, um, who just really just got the bag and got the fuck out of there. Um, so it seems so weird, man. Like. On paper, how are they not better? I mean, seriously, seriously. They, they, I feel like they have better talent than the Wizards and the Nets, but I somehow think they'll be worse. Ron Holland, second r- rookie mention of the uh, of the episode. Ron Holland, like, might be fun, but I have no idea what Detroit's goal is this season. Like, are you, like, is it? Is, are you really gonna, you know? have another year of being truly terrible. I think the basketball gods have like smited you with enough fourth overall and fifth overall picks to figure that out. You know, um, who knows, man? I, I do think they will be better than 14 wins, but I don't know how much better. Um, Tobias Harris brings good veteran presence and all, but I don't know, man. Um, even in a very weak East, I have no idea what to think. I think I think their floor is, again, the worst team in the NBA. It's, it's easy just to point out that, hey, they've been the worst team in the NBA for, like, the past three seasons. Um, but I, I, you know, again, you look at the, the roster and you're like, how is this team not better? Like, if they put it all together this season, could they make the play-in? I think so. It's not that hard to make the play-in in the East. Half of the teams aren't even trying to make the fucking play-in, you know? Anyway, um, it'll be an interesting watch. And if J.B. Bickerstaff can kind of hit a culture reset, it would be cool to see the Pistons good again because Detroit has really good fans. Moving on. Indiana Pacers. Last year, they were 47-35. and 35. Good for sixth in the East. They made it to the Eastern Conference Finals. Um, upset the Knicks in the second round. And then just got their face pushed in by the Celtics. Um, added Wiseman, which is an interesting add if you ask me. I'll come back to that. Um, you lost Jalen Smith. You re-signed McConnell. re Pascal Siakam. Obi Toppin. Nemhard. James Johnson. All time, uh, all time bench guy. By the way, uh, projected lineup: got Halley, Nemhard, Neesmith, Siakam, Miles Turner. So this is this is a team that a lot of people, um, you know, sort of like. Oh, it's a regular season team. Ah, da, da, this, that, and the third. And Rick Carlisle, he does employ, you know, the the tactics that people would say that. You know, how it just goes extremely high tempo with Halliburton. And, you know, Halliburton's good enough where he can run that to major success as we saw last year. The first half of Halliburton's season was fucking incredible. I mean, his first half is the reason he made all NBA. He was incredible, dude. Like, and the pace they were running at, it was it was ridiculous. Um, it is pretty much the same Pacers team that made it to the Eastern Conference Finals. Um, I think they can make it back there, but I think that's where it ends. You know, because 
if you're saying they make it to the finals, you're like, okay, cool. So that men that means they beat Boston and or Philadelphia and or Orlando and or New York. You know, there's the top end of the East is pretty fucking good. Um, yeah, like the Cavs as well. You know, it's going to be interesting because the Knicks got better. 76ers got better. They just have to stay healthy. Um, yeah. So, you know, if ha- if Halliburton does stay healthy, though, I legitimately think they could win 50 games. Um, the pace they play at, led by Halley, it's, it's an easy formula, dude. It's an easy formula to win. And I think a lot will... A lot of winning will happen. Um, I think their floor, if they stay healthy, is the sixth seed. And their ceiling, I think another Eastern Conference run is in the uh in the in in, in the in the in the in the tea leaves at their ceiling. But we'll see. Moving on. The Miami Heat. Uh last year the Heat were forty six and thirty six. Good for eighth in the East. Makes him a playing team. Added Alec Burks in the offseason. Lost Caleb Martin, Patty Mills, and some other pieces. Not, not no 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 needle movers though. You know, um, yeah. If I'm not 100 percent accurate, just in terms of like, you know, somebody's gonna somebody's gonna listen. Um, some Pistons fan is gonna listen and be like, oh my god, they didn't mention so and so leaving. If I didn't mention them, it's because I didn't write them down in my notes. Because again, not gonna move the needle. Um, so people are like, oh, you're gonna mention Patty Mills leaving the Heat. And yeah, he could have moved the needle. I don't know. He's fucking old, but you never know. Anyway, <laughs> they re-signed Bam, re-signed Kevin Love, um, re-signed Haywood Highsmith. Uh, great, great name by the way. Um, re-signed Thomas Bryant. They're probably gonna roll out Rozier, Hero, Jimmy B, Jovich, and Bam as their starting lineup. Um, this is an Eric Spolscher coach, coach team, you know, heat culture, uh, all that. Um, but it's been weird because, you know, this team just is sometimes so inconsistent. Yeah. So, you know, this is, I think year five or four of this core. You've gotten to the finals twice. You just unfortunately ran into Nikola Jokic and LeBron James. You know, these these things happen. Um I don't I don't know if another finals run is in them. Butler's another year older. Who knows if he can be a number one in this league still? He wasn't solid last year. Um and Bam, while he's still I, I would say Bam is probably one of the best number twos in the league. Um just just does so much dirty work um and just really like can you imagine if like bam and curry played together oh that'd be so fucking cool hey you know i i know they just re-signed bam and bam probably really loves playing in miami it's it's not uh let's not rule that one out that would be really fun it's my it's my 2k trade of the week um i (sighs) I'm not super excited about Miami's depth. There's not a lot there. Um, I just, I don't know. I think this is a playoff team. It's such a weird team. I, I This is the third team I've called weird, but the East has a bunch of weird teams where you're like, where are we going? They feel like they're sitting in neutral, but I don't know. Who knows? I, I say this, and then, you know, out of nowhere, they're just going to catch crazy luck, beat the Celtics in the first round, and go on and, you know, make a finals run and then lose to Luka Doncic. We'll, we'll fucking see. Moving on. This is an interesting team, and this is a team I actually kind of have a good feeling about. Uh, Milwaukee Bucks, 49-33 and 33 last year. That's good for third in the East. Um... So Milwaukee last year, I I think there's a lot of just really weird things that happened. Like 
we still don't really know we still don't really know what happened with adrian griffin right you know like who pulled that trigger like i i mean maybe 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 i'm you know speaking in poor faith because i like i i I am I have been perused Milwaukee beat writers recently. So I could be wrong. But the point is is that weird shit was happening to Milwaukee last year. You know, you lost Drew Holiday and you gained Dame. You know, he didn't have a great off season. He was going through a divorce. You know, these things affect people. Giannis also got injured in the first round, so yeah, you know, it's tough to fucking win when your your best player is missing games in the first round. Um, Doc Rivers is coaching this team. Uh, they're gonna have a. Um, I don't. I don't think I mentioned the ads. Added Torian Torian Prince, uh, Gary Trent Jr., Delon Wright, which three adds to this core that are really fucking solid. If I might add, <laughs> um, Pat Bev and Beasley left, which like meh. Who fucking cares? <laughs> Truthfully. So you look at the starting lineup, and it's probably going to be Dame, Trent Jr., Middleton, Antetokounmpo, Brooke Lopez. And you're like, oh, well, you know, if everyone stays healthy, you're like, oh, this, is, this might be really interesting, you know? And people love to shit on Doc Rivers. They do. But Doc is a great regular season coach. Um, you know, after a year, a really weird year, coach fired, I think it was halfway through the season. I remember they had 33 wins at the time. They were like 33 and 13 or something and they fucking fired him. Team dealt with injuries, personal stuff. But this year, this year's different. You got year two of Dame in Milwaukee. The depth that they have built it's looking fucking solid man as i said torian prince trent jr these are good ads these are good ads these are like potential needle movers that's why they're mentioned baby <laughs> um i i think people forget how Giannis can be you know he's had some playoff disappointments over the last two three years and, like, Giannis can, I mean, he was MVPs, you know, defensive player of the year. He's, he's, he's a fucking stunning player. And, I don't know. I, I think this could be a really incredible, um, wait, hold on. I don't think Giannis has a defensive player of the year. No, 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 no. He does. He does. He went. He he won it in nineteen twenty. I think. I don't remember. Anyway, that information is annoying to recall. <laughs> so, <sighs> nope. Wow, the Mets lost eight to nothing. Brutal. Um, again, people. I think this team is discounted because of the recent playoff record without people factoring in the injuries. And I I think this team can make a championship run. I really do. This this as I said the the top of the east is is fucking intense and it's going to be it's going to be it's going to be a fun season at the top of the east. That's all, you know. That's all I'm saying. Um Milwaukee Bucks um if healthy, their floor is like a fourth seed. If healthy, they're going to win, or they could win the championship, is what I think. Um, next team, Knicks. 15-32 last year. Good for second in the East. You add Bridges, Payne, Shamit, Carl Anthony Towns. You lose Bogdanovich, Burks, Dante DiVincenzo, Hartenstein, and Randall. Um, Randall and Dante DiVincenzo were traded for Carl Anthony Towns, just so folks know. Um, in the off season, you gave OG Ananobi two hundred million dollars. Bold choice, bold choice. And I know I I'm gonna have 
Knicks fans, if you're listening to this, you're going to be like, I'm sorry. Bro's hella injury prone. And if I, if I am giving somebody $200 million, you better be an all NBA player at the very fucking least. Neither here nor there. Uh, resigned Brunson for less money than, than OG, which is, that's just silly, man. Um, and you resigned Precious. So, starting lineup is what? So you go Brunson, Bridges, Hart, OG, Ananobi, Carl Anthony Towns. I think that's the small lineup, right? And then you can go big and have, like, I guess... I guess you just take out Hart, right? You go Brunson, Bridges, OG, Carl Anthony Towns, and then Robinson, if he's healthy, slash Jericho Sims, slash um, Precious, whoever, you know, whoever's in there. Um, Tibbs coach team. Um, I think, you know, you you traded five first-round picks for Bridges. You, you, you traded... Randall and Dante DiVincenzo for Carl Anthony Towns. You lost Hartenstein, which I I think is going to be felt, I, I, especially when when Mitchell Robinson uh, is you know still injured. That that you're you're gonna you're gonna feel that Knicks fans, um, because I feel like Hartenstein and Carl Anthony Towns are sort of on big are on two separate sides of the same spectrum we're like carl anthony towns intensely intensely talented like one of the most talented big men we've ever seen but just just a stupid fucking player sometimes just dumb fouls all the time dumb shots sometimes it's ridiculous and then on the other end you know hartenstein he's not the most talented player you know it's not doesn't ha- doesn't shoot the lights out. He's you know he's a, he's a good defender. He's a good rebounder, but you know he's not he's not averaging twenty. But he is intensely smart. <laughs> like you watch Hartenstein and you're like, oh yeah, this guy fucking you know he's got a good basketball IQ. And so I don't know. That's my spectrum. Um, coached by Tibbs. Um, you know I think. In terms of talent acquisition, the Knicks definitely had the best off season. You get Bridges, you got Cat. Um, I'm, I am, I am worried about Brunson's health. Um, not necessarily for anything that like he's picked up, but just because, you know, in in the league, smaller guards have shorter careers. And with Thibodeau specifically having like such a rigorous style of play and such a physical style of play that admittedly that does worry me. That does worry me. Maybe not for this year, maybe not even for next year, but just going forward, you know, it's it's a fucking good thing. Brunson took less money because that it, I don't know. He, I love Jalen Brunson. I think Jalen Brunson is fantastic for New York City. But again, I just worry. I worry with the history of small guards in our league. And I worry with the rigorous physical nature of Tip's system. I worry for his health. <clears throat> um, they have shooting. They have size. They have depth. I think health and chemistry issues will be the only thing to stop the Knicks. Like straight up. Um, like, I think they'll win at least two playoff series. Um, I've been wrong on Tibbs in the past. I, in my, in my head, you know, I had head cannon of Tibbs where it was like, Tibbs has a three year cycle and he, and that's what it used to be. Um, I know he lasted a little bit longer in Chicago, but you know, it always, it always seemed to eventually have, you know, the runway eventually ended. But I'm gonna start. I'm gonna stop doubting. Um, I I didn't think it would work in New York, but maybe I was wrong. And I'm sorry, Knicks fans. I'm sorry, Tom Thibodeau. I I'm giving you your flowers, 
Um, Knicks fans expect a really fucking fun season. I think this team can win north of 50 games if we're talking ceiling. And, you know, non-injury floor is like a fifth seed. And the only reason I say that is because the East the, again I'm I this is like the third time I'm mentioning it but the East is so top heavy so top heavy Knicks Bucks Cavs Celtics um 76ers it's five teams right there all have championship aspirations buckle up it's going to it's it's there's going to be a lot of really fun basketball this season I think uh, moving on to another fun basketball team, the Orlando Magic, forty-seven and thirty-five last year, good enough for fifth in the East. Added KCP, Contavious Caldwell Pope for those who are out of the loop. Corey Joseph, who I continue to be surprised when I see Corey Joseph is still in the league, but that I that's just me. Um, you lost Ingles, who knew? Um, re-signed Carter or sorry Wendell Carter Jr. sorry folks re-signed Harris Jonathan Isaac the Wagner brothers <laughs> um, and so your starting lineup is Suggs KCP Franz Wagner Paolo Benchero 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 I think it's Benchero um, and Wendell Carter Jr. coaches Jamal Mosley I think, you know, I don't believe I've watched enough Orlando Magic basketball to have an opinion on Jamal Mosley, but he did lead this team to a pretty substantial turnaround. Um, and you know, this this is this is a really fun team because it's really fucking stout defensively. Um, this is, this is, this is a fun and upcoming team. You know, people used to make a joke, jokes about the, uh, the bright future suns. This is, this is the bright future magic, yo. Um, you know, the, the core of Paolo, Suggs, and Wagner is clearly the future in Orlando. Um, I'm assuming this will be the best defensive team in the league. It's either going to be them or the Cavs, I would say. Um, yeah, I, I think they're a year away from really competing, especially in the East this year, because it's just so fucking stacked. Um, but shit, maybe Paolo takes the next step, you know, and suddenly they're able to hang with the elite of the East. Um, this team is definitely headed in the right direction. Um, KCP is going to help out with playoff experience. I, I think this is... at the at the worst, at the absolute worst, this is like a low playoff team. Um, so like a six seed. And I think the best, like, I, I think they can maybe make the conference finals. Uh, not too sure on that one, honestly. Um, but anyway, uh, next team on the list, Philadelphia 76ers. 47 and 35 last year, seventh in the East. Added Drummond, added Paul George, Eric Gordon, Caleb Martin. Oh, I might have to change, like looking at the notes now, I might have to change my mind on the talent acquisition who had the best one. Because on paper, this is pretty fucking nuts. That's like, that's a 2K offseason. Um, resigned Embiid, Lowry, Maxi, Ubre, just retained. Um, it'd probably start Maxi Ubre, George Martin, and Embiid, right? Uh, maybe maybe start George at the four. Anyway, um, but this team will go as it always has with the health of Embiid. Paul George, great addition, brings a lot of good stuff. Um, and I'm pretty sure. Just he's the third option here, right? Yeah. Um, but no matter what, the health of Embiid is going to dictate how far they go. Um, I think Nurse could have this team 
winning more than 60 games. That sounds pretty realistic. Um, my cat is clawing out my door. I'm almost done, I promise. <laughs> we got two more teams after this. Don't worry. And they're bad teams, so they'll go fast. <laughs> um, so, yeah. yeah. I, it's just it's so annoying because MB just doesn't stay healthy. And he continues to get older. And health doesn't get better. As you get older, folks, that's not the way the body works, especially when you play professional sports. Um, it's wishful thinking because it, it it's not the trend of history, and like as it relates to Embiid and this team, like that's just not what's happened. Um, and Paul George already has a hyperextended knee. Last time Paul George had a hyperextended knee, he missed a month. It, it already off to a bad start. You know, and it didn't look bad. So I don't know if he'll miss a month this time, but this is, I would say this out of all of the East contenders, this is probably the one I am most unsure on simply because you have to rely on Embiid and Paul George to stay healthy. And, you know, not only have they sustained pretty major injuries in their career, they are just consistently always dealing with something. So, sorry, sorry, Sixers fans, but they, I, I would not want to buy in on this team. That being said, if you do stay healthy, somehow, I legitimately think this team could make a finals run. But that's a lot of ifs for a percentage that probably won't happen. Moving on. Toronto Raptors, 25 and 57 last year, 12th in the East. You added Davion Mitchell, but you lost Gary Trent Jr., Jalen McDaniels. Jalen McDaniels, by the way. Not Jaden McDaniels, not Jaden Daniels. Um, resigned Scotty Barnes, resigned quickly, resigned Garrett Temple. You'll start. Quickly, Grady Dick, R.J. Barrett, Scotty Barnes, Jakob Pertl, right? Coach. I don't even... I, I know I know he came in last year, but I don't even know how to say his name. Darko Rajakovic? Rajakovic? As a, as a basketball nerd, I should know this. I have zero idea what, what, what to make of this team. Like, Sc Scotty Barnes is making a lot of fucking money to like he, he's he's not a solid scorer like he would not be a go-to scorer on a number one team at least the way he is now grady dick isn't that guy yet i i don't know and i just can't see them taking a step towards contention without like taking a massive leap right he didn't add much in the offseason. So, this is largely the same team that almost lost 60 fucking games. 60 games. They almost lost 60 games. That's insane. So, it's like, all right, more of the same, I guess. Like, let's just develop our guys. I don't know. I think this team's ceiling is a plan. Like, you're, you're, you're telling me, like, let's go through it. So, like, Celts 1, Knicks 2, Bucks 3. Oh, it's the same order as last year. Shut up. This is a, this is a hypothetical. Um, Pacers 4, Cavs 5, 76 or 6th. Who, who are the Raptors? Who are the Raptors jumping to, 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 have a, to have a guaranteed playoff spot? None of those teams. None of those teams. And certainly none of the teams ahead. You know, like, I don't think they're better than Atlanta. You know, they're, they're better than the Nets. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Are they better than the Hornets? Eh, probably not better than the Bulls. You know, there's just, as I go through this, there's just, there's, I, I, I'm not a believer. Not better than the Heat. Nope. Nope. No, they're not. Yeah, no. No, sorry, guys. Sorry, Raptors fans. Um, 
I don't know if any Raptors fans listen to the podcast, but if you do, I'm sorry. I think your team's going to be bad again. Um, Sorry, Scotty Barnes isn't more gifted offensively, but this is the way things are. On to another team that I think is going to be exactly the same. The Washington Wizards, um, 15 and 67. Oh, good for 14th in the West. When you, when you, when you lose, when you lose as many games, or when you lose more games than the number one seed had wins, that's never good. That is never, ever good. Um, but hey, you got, you got Brogdon. That's exciting, right? You got Jonas Valanciunas, solid center. Let's go. Sadiq Bey, hello. You lost, uh, Denny Abdija. I always struggle to say his name. Landry Shamit. Um, didn't really resign anyone. And this, this, this all-star starting lineup of Poole, Bilal Koulibaly, Kyle Kuzma, Saar, Jonas Valanciunas. Um, Brian Keefe, I don't know much, um, if anything. So I can't speak to that. But I do think this team is going to be awful. Um, not a ton of talent at all. Second overall is nice to have, but this team is one hundred percent taking right. Like, come on, the core, the, the core, the the core of Kuzma Pool. That is not a playoff core. The money being paid to Pool is a joke. And I know, like, oh, they didn't sign him to that. Yeah, but you traded for him. I yeah, I'm not sure there's a worse high volume score. Like he's in the Levine zone. Like straight up. It's not a ton to look forward to here. Just enjoy Jaden Daniels, I guess. Um Yeah. Sorry Wizards fans. I have no belief. I think you, you, like max absolute max you'll be a play in. But that's not going to happen cuz you're going to want to tank. And that was the East. This was longer than I thought. It took me an hour. I gotta go to bed very soon. That's okay, though. I'll just edit this and go to bed. Um, so if you're still listening, thank you very much for listening. Appreciate you sticking with me and all my basketball notes. Um, I, I So the way I did it was I... Um, I did it on a small note, not a small notepad, but like, I don't know, this is like, what, six inches by like eight inches? I don't know. That's yeah, long. That's like a foot, I guess. But we'll say like, it's not a big pad. Um, and so the way I was taking notes is I was doing it alphabetically, but then I was like, oh, fuck, wait. I didn't split this up into the East and the West. So I ripped out all of the East sheets and then just stapled them together because I'm nice like that. Anyway, thank you for listening to the Play and See podcast and my nice long NBA Eastern Conference preview. Um, make sure you're liking, make sure you're subscribing. Uh, check us out on Instagram, check us out on Twitter. We're all there. Check us out. Give us a hello give us a follow give us a like please no i'm kidding it's not that big a deal um yeah look forward to the western conference episode that'll be coming out um i think that's the way i stack what so tomorrow's thursday so this is coming out tomorrow and then i'll probably have it come out saturday yeah, Saturday, and then have the football pod that I'll do on week seven. That'll come out maybe Monday or Tuesday. Undecided when that's going to be recorded yet. Anyway, thank you again. Appreciate you sticking around. Um, yeah, have a great night, evening, day, whatever it is, whenever it is. Peace out. Have a good one.